Hi friends and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be looking at scary abandoned theme parks. I honestly think theme parks that are abandoned are one of the coolest things to look at. Like, come on, an abandoned Ferris wheel? That's Chernobyl. Abandoned roller coaster? I don't know, Six Flags, bro? It's sick. So let's have a look. Ever since the first enclosed amusement park was opened in Coney Island in 1895, they have become some of the most popular entertainment venues in the world. Oh, there are my. now almost a thousand parks around the world. But for each one that becomes a commercial success, there are countless others that have fallen to disrepair. And Dude, ruin. see, wait. One that becomes a commercial success, there are countless others that have fallen. Tell me that isn't one of the coolest things you're looking at right now. That is sick. I'm pretty sure that's Six Flags. Correct me if I'm wrong, but dude, that's insane. That is insane. One to disrepair and ruin. Whether due to poor planning, an uninspired concept, or safety failures, these venues are often simply shut down and begin to deteriorate, leaving just a faint memory of what the creators originally intended. Let's take a look at 15 scary abandoned amusement parks. Oh, no. Number 15. Nara Dreamland, Japan. Oh my god, wait, if what? If the huge castle at the entrance, the artificial mountain, and the main street full of stores and games of Nara Dreamland seem familiar, that's, that's because in 1961 it was intentionally opened as Japan's answer to the Disney theme park in California. Huh? Built near the city of Nara, it was an immediate success, and at its peak attracted almost 2 million visitors per year. That's Things began to take a downturn, however, when the Tokyo Disneyland opened in 1983, oh, no. and subsequently, Tokyo Disney Sea and the universe. Dude, look at how big it is, bro. Oh my god. <sighs> you can't compete. You can't compete with Disneyland. This is what happens. It goes abandoned. Studios Japan, all within 30 miles of Nara Dreamland. Oh god, and it's visitor close. visitor numbers plummeted to such an extent that in 2006, after being open for 45 years, Dude. it was forced to close. That's sad. Even by that time, there had been so little investment in the maintenance of the site that rides were beginning to rust, and the castle oh. itself had been declared a safety hazard. And for the next 10 years oh. before it was fully demolished, it became more like a nightmare land. With nature beginning to reclaim the site, it was covered in foliage growing through the paving stones and the tracks of the rides. Damn. The buildings began to crumble, and rust took hold everywhere you could look. Because of its history and the way it had been left, Nara Dreamland became a popular site for urban explorers. But because of the increasing risk someone might seriously injure themselves as they walk through the decrepit structures, no. there was no choice but to remove what was left entirely. No. Number 14, Dinosaur go. World, Arkansas. Wait. Sam and Colby have been here. Just want to say, I'm not going to go through the video because it's not that exciting. It's just big dinosaur statues spread across lots of land. That's it. It opened. The 65-acre site was by far the largest dinosaur park on Earth. See what I mean? It's it featured huge. more than 100 different life-size statues of dinosaurs and other prehistoric creatures, and also had a dedicated area to mythical beasts, too. See, what are you supposed to do here? Like, it's just a lot of dinosaurs hanging around? Like, do you just walk and just see dinosaurs and that's it? Because that's a long walk just to see, what, three dinosaurs? It's cool, but it's also, like, really random. Disney's River Country, Florida. There's no doubt that Disney has built the most famous and successful amusement park empire in the world. But despite the company's experience in this industry, even they don't get it right every time. Oh. Disney World in Florida is by far the biggest collection of parks on Earth. You probably know that it includes two water parks, but did you know that there was originally a third? Called Disney's River Country. It was actually the company's first water park, and opened in June of 1976. Damn. It was built along the shore of Bay Lake and had a Wild West theme and featured two large swimming pools, five water slides, and two large areas dedicated to children's activities. With falling visitor numbers and several deaths that happened on site, it closed... Several deaths? How does someone dive at River Country? ...the end of the 2001 season and was never reopened. The oh, well, structures that's... of the park still remain to this day, however, albeit in a rundown state. The only thing Disney did was to drain one of the larger pools and erect fencing around the site to prevent anyone from gaining access. But in recent years, it's become a popular destination for urban explorers. Oh, you can get in it's there. It's creepy seeing a place that was designed for so many thousands of people being Dude. completely empty, with stagnant pools of water and crumbling slides all around. And while it may not have been demolished yet, there are rumors that the company eventually plans on completely redeveloping the site, perhaps as an extension to another park or as a... I mean, yeah, you can redevelop it by demolishing everything. I don't know. I don't know if you can 
really bring it back after, you know, the, the, in the state it's in. I want to go. Imagine rocking up to Disneyland and you can just go a bin exploring. That'd be fun for me. That's all I need. Number 12. Ooh. Boomers. Dania Beach. Boomers. There are still seven Boomers amusement parks in operation throughout California and Florida. But this is just a fraction of the number of the company operated in its heyday, with at least 11 having been closed in recent years. 11? And there's seven left. More than half of them got closed down. Can we talk about how messed up this looks? I don't trust wooden roller coasters. I feel like that shit can snap. Perhaps the most famous was the Dania Beach Park, which that was in Fort insane. Lauderdale, and was home to what was once the largest wooden roller coaster in the state known as the Hurricane. It was 100 feet tall, 3,200 feet oh. long, and was by far the most impressive structure on the site, but surprisingly wasn't actually owned by boomers and was run by a third party. Oh, God, After that's opening the ride in 2000, they soon found out there was a reason why Florida doesn't have many wooden coasters, and that's because the humid climate significantly increases the maintenance requirements and it became commercially unviable. The coaster itself was closed in 2011, and the rest of the park, with its mini golf course and arcades, followed suit in 2015. And for several years, the site was left to crumble. Urban yeah. explorers managed to capture incredible images of what the place looked like as it began to be overtaken by fast-growing trees and shrubs, and it was only finally demolished a few years later to be replaced by a shopping mall. What? A shopping mall? Number 11. That's so random. Let's just get rid of this wooden roller coaster and put a mall here. Okay, cool. Dunblobbin, Crinkly Bottom, England. It's oh, is that 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 pink dude, cartoon character? He's got like the weird body. Not body shaming, but old mate. Common yeah. for an amusement park that to be dude. based upon an entertainment yes. brand. Yes. Crinkly Bottom in England was probably the most unusual example of this. What is ever. bro doing? Taking inspiration from a popular Saturday night entertainment show at the time, Crinkly Bottom's mascot was Mr. Blobby, a giant spotty pink creature that became renowned in the country for his madcap antics. Three parks were actually opened in the 1990s, with the biggest being located in Somerset. Dunblobbin, a recreation of Mr. Blobby's house, became one of the focal aspects of the park. But due to lack of interest, the funding was pulled less than a year after opening. Oh. The park removed all references to the character. Jump scare? As for his home, it was sealed off and forgotten about until the 2000s, when a group of urban explorers rediscovered it. It didn't no matter way. that it had fallen into such a state of disrepair, and as such, a nostalgic link to the 90s. What remained of Dunblobbin became a site for illegal raves and parties. The oh. polystyrene toilet was even removed and placed on display in an art gallery. Damn. The fear of injuries and lack of control over what was happening there, the landowner was eventually forced to demolish the entire site. No. Sadly, Unblobbin was removed for good. Damn, can we get an RIP in the chat? Imagine having a rave there. That'd be insanely fucking cool. <laughs> in the Dunblobbin Yongma Land, South Korea. Built in the 1980s, Yongma Land was a small family focused amusement park near Seoul in South Korea. It was full of pop culture icons Smurf. from the time. It's Papa Smurf. It's very Underwent very little development by the time it finally closed its doors in 2011, which meant it remained a memory of times gone oh, by. That was Michael Jackson, guys. Did you see him? Doors in 2011, which meant it remained a memory of times. It's Michael Jackson. When did he die? I don't it's know. Gone by. Attendance had drastically fallen thanks to the opening of modern theme parks nearby and stories of hauntings. But rather than demolishing oh. the site or preventing anyone from accessing it, it's now gained a new lease of life by welcoming visitors who want to see the park in its ongoing state of decay. With an what? octopus That's ride sick. covered in rust, to stacks of broken dodgem cars, a broken down clown roller coaster, and a collapsing Viking ship, the new owner charges around five bucks for entry. And for thirty dollars, we'll oh. even turn on the lights of the haunted merry-go-round in the evening. I respect that. I wish more abandoned places did that. So it's like you can just go in and enjoy like it being abandoned without like the concern of getting like caught or doing anything illegal. But that kind of removes the thrill of abandoned exploring. Like I feel like a lot of people do it because it's like, yeah, break the law. I don't know. I, I respect it though. That's sick. That is honestly so cool. Number nine, Hao Te Tien, Vietnam. Oh, this place is awesome. With an incredible three-story tall dragon aquarium at the center of the park, Hao Te Tien was set to be the next big thing when it opened in Vietnam in 2004. The water park was built around a lake with a focal feature in the middle. 
and as you walked up the central staircase, you'd find yourself surrounded by tanks that contained a wide variety of animals, including rays, sharks, and even crocodiles. The problem, though, was that with costs escalating, the investors in the $3 million park insisted that it opened before it was fully complete. Oh. This led to an underwhelming response by visitors. Within a few years, it was no longer sustainable, and it was closed. And with no funds left to demolish any of the structures, they were left in place. Oh, they didn't even have enough money to get rid of the place. That's crazy. Even the animals oh, in the no. aquarium were simply released into the lake, which led oh. to a large crocodile population establishing itself in the following years. Oh my god, they Wuxia just... Tian, which was once easy to get to, was removed from all the guidebooks, and access was restricted. What? Meaning... That's so many! I just can't believe they let all the animals out into the lake. They couldn't hire anyone to take the animals back. I mean, they could have probably sold them. But I feel like that's breaking the law in itself. Yeah, that's animal cu cruelty. I don't know if they would survive. Or, well, they obviously didn't because the crocs came and they had a feast and now they live there. Only those who knew exactly where it was were able to return. There was something about the dragon building which had begun to crumble that seemed majestic amongst its surroundings. It became such a popular destination that there were even reports of a refreshment truck offering drinks to visitors inside the perimeter of the abandoned venue. No way. As for the crocodiles, they remained an ever-present threat to the oh, people who took God. the risk of visiting, and authorities were eventually forced to relocate them to a nearby wildlife park. Honestly, I'd rather have a security guard than a lot of gators coming after me if I was exploring an abandoned place. So glad that they got rid of them. <laughs> They're like, uh, the building's not a hazard, the animals are. I'm gonna get rid of them. Daddy Park, Belgium. Daddy Park in Moose <gasps> Belgium. Is that Bugs Bunny? No, Ocean, it was first opened oh, in the 1950s welcome. as a small playground to entertain the children of pilgrims who were visiting the local church. But it became so popular. What is this? It's like a roller coaster, but then at the end you fly off. What if you just go in the water? Unless these things float. What? That in the 1970s underwent a program of redevelopment to install a series of new attractions, such as a huge monkey bridge course and several water rides. This brought new visitors from far and wide. At its peak, saw more than a million guests passing through the turnstiles oh. each year. As tastes began to change, however, the park's popularity declined, and the final straw came as a result of years of Damn. underinvestment. The rides became more and more dangerous, and in 2000, a young boy lost his arm as a result of an accident on the Nautic jet ride. The park never recovered, and within two years, it was- Oh, dude, imagine going there and losing your arm, and then keeping the park open. It's like, yeah, this guy just walked out without an arm. We're just going to leave it open. It oh, that's closed. messed up. The larger rides were taken down over the next few years, but most of the other structures were left in place. Now overgrown, you can hardly tell that it used to be such a busy park, and the only clues of what used to be there are the occasional metal railings and derelict buildings. It's become famous within the urban explorer community for the relative ease of access and the unusual objects that remain. But because the authorities became concerned by an increasing number of people who oh, were trespassing on the site, demolished. they've continued to demolish more of the buildings. No. The plans are now underway to convert it into a hiking trail. I mean, a hiking trail would be kind of cool. But that's kind of sad. This looks fun. Hopefully they don't get rid of that, to be honest. Number seven, Ghost Town in the Sky, North Carolina. Ooh, they got the freaking, what are these called? Like chairlifts still? That'd be sick. First opened in May of 1961. What the, the hell? Ghost Town in the Sky was a Wild West theme amusement park in Maggie Valley, North Carolina. Built at an elevation of around 4,600 feet at the top of Buck Mountain. It was often called North oh. Carolina's Mile High Theme Park. Built at a cost of a million dollars, the owners enlisted the help of locals to faithfully recreate 40 replica buildings for the western town, and over the years went on to build several rides, which included, as of 1986, a full-size roller coaster called the Red Devil. Oh, right gosh. from the start, the park experienced issues, however. Despite attracting, at its peak, more than 600,000 visitors each year, there was no actual public road to access it. Oh. Instead, every guest had to arrive at a car park at the base of the mountain, oh, using a refinicular so railway bad. or a 3,300-foot-long chairlift to reach it. Oh, In 2002, no. the chairlift failed and left people stuck for more than two hours. Oh. This ultimately led to the park's closure. Very Dude, imagine being stuck in a chairlift for two hours on that mountain oh i couldn't imagine i feel like 
To get into a theme park via a chairlift would turn off so many people. I've been on chairlifts and it's like, well, if like you're not strapped in. If you fall off, you fall off. And there's no option to walk. Really? That's messed up. Little has been spent for maintenance on any of the machinery, and the owners realized how dangerous it had all become. Despite an attempt to reopen in 2007 after extensive renovations, the ghost town in the sky closed its doors for good in 2009 and has been left to fall into an even worse state of disrepair ever since. Dude. There are still hopes that the investment will be found to try to reopen it again, which means that for the time being it's been left to rust away and has become a thing of legend in urban explorer circles because of the difficulty of accessing the site. It's now just like an abandoned and haunted Wild West village. And the moment you set foot there, it feels like you've been transported back in time. Dude. Imagine going to explore there, though. Like, you have to walk up there. There is no other choice. That would take you hours. I low-key want to go. I'd, I'd walk all the way up there to get in there. That's dedication, though. God damn. Number six, Pripyat Amusement Park. When amusement parks open for the first time, it's often cause for huge excitement and celebration to the local community, who are able to take advantage of the new facilities for the first time. In the case of the newly built Pripyat Amusement Park, however, this anticipation soon evaporated because just days before the official opening, something terrible happened. It was April of 1986, and with the final touches of paint still drying, the park was ready for the grand opening at the beginning of May. Early in the morning on the 26th of April, one of the worst nuclear accidents to ever take oh. place happened at the nearby Chernobyl power plant. And this meant that not only was the opening cancelled, but the entire city of Pripyat was evacuated. Oh. It's never been repopulated since because of radiation levels. I didn't realize um the amusement park was never really open at all before Chernobyl happened. Oh dear. Oh damn, that's actually... That's sad. That's honestly depressing. Um. At the center of the amusement park was an 85-foot tall Ferris wheel that's become an iconic image of the effects of the disaster on the local community, and it still stands in its place to this day. The other rides are still there too. Apart from during tests, they were never open to the general public. The open space was used by helicopters in the aftermath of the accident, which meant Dude. that higher levels of radiation were deposited there than elsewhere and tests have shown that the concrete areas are still highly dangerous. Still, if you're feeling brave enough, it's possible to take tours through the ghost city of Pripyat, and the amusement park is one of the most impactful stops along the route. I'd love to go Number there. Number five, Spree Park, Berlin. Oh. Berlin's Spree Park. Is it near a power plant? <laughs> what? It was one of the most visited attractions in the city, with more than one and a half million visitors each year. But poor financial management meant that it would eventually be forced to close, and has since become an abandoned wilderness. It was first opened in 1969 to much excitement, especially because of the towering Ferris wheel. Following the reunification of Germany in 1989, huge investment was used to put it on par with Western-style parks, with roller coasters, water rides, and several themed village areas, and it was during the 90s that it reached its heyday. The lack of transport to the park, though, oh, meant that they again. were never able to attract enough people to recoup the huge investment. And with spiraling debt, Spree Park was closed in 2002. Some of the rides were shipped to Peru <gasps> to try to... What is that? Wait, shipped to Peru? Where's that? That's... Um, I don't know. Open a new park. Oh, the buildings that remained were left to fall apart. While there are plans to try to renovate the site and reopen it, for now it remains a memory of what once was. And it's occasionally open yeah. for performances, festivals, and screenings of movies. I don't think you're going to be able to renovate that. Why do they think they can renovate something that's so rusty and abandoned? Like, it's... that's... No, you, you just have to demo it and do it again, honestly. But that's fine. It looks cool. <gasps> Six Flags! Number four. Six Flags I told you. Orleans. I told you at the start of the video, I was like, that's Six Flags, and guess who was right? This guy right here. Watch Sam and Colby and you'll know. Okay. Originally opening as Jazzland in the year 2000, Six Flags took control of the amusement park on the outskirts of New Orleans in 2003. They had high hopes for what they could do with the venue, but unfortunately it was flooded during Hurricane Katrina, Ooh. which was responsible for so much pain and suffering in the city. As for the theme park, it took a month before the floodwaters receded, and by that time the site had been ruined. 
faced with a bill of tens of millions of dollars oh, to fix things. That's so much. eighty percent of the buildings and virtually all of the rides had been destroyed, Six Flags instead removed all salvageable assets and reinstalled them in other parks. Dude. Now covered in graffiti in every direction, infested with rodents and overgrown, it's now become a popular destination for urban explorers and it's been used as a location in a number of movies, including Jurassic World and Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. No way. Number three, Joyland, Kansas. Kansas. Opened in 1949 and only closing 55 years later in 2004, Joyland was once the premier amusement park in Kansas. It had 25 rides, including an amazing wooden roller coaster called Nightmare, along with a number of other classic designs from the 40s and 50s. Called Nightmare? Why'd they name it Nightmare for? Okay. Problems began in 2004 with the aging infrastructure, which began when a young girl fell from the more than half a century old Ferris wheel. The ensuing investigations no. found that many of the other structures were unsafe too, and it would have cost oh, no. so much to fix these problems that the decision was made to close the park for good. Since yeah. that day, the park has remained in place, and apart from a couple of fires that have destroyed buildings and the inevitable vegetation that's begun to grow over everything, it's still recognizable as Joyland although in a frighteningly Ugh. run-down state. This might not be the end of the story, though, because the site was sold in 2018 for just under $200,000, and it's quite possible that the new owners will complete the plans for Wait. renovations to find a way to open it once more. It's like all demoed. Oh no, that's sad. Yet again, I think Sam and Colby also went there. Because uh, they lived in Kansas, so... It, that looked familiar, or that, this... This looks familiar in one of their videos. I'm sorry to bring them up all the time. All right, I apologize. Number two, Camelot, UK. Ooh. Whether or not you believe in the legend of King Arthur, there's one thing for sure. Camelot most certainly did exist. Albeit as a small theme park in England that was opened between 1983 and 2012. Based around the legends, visitors entered the huge castle when they first arrived and had a choice of a wide range of rides, just like you'd expect from the best parks. That looks 2012 sick. proved to be a tough year, though, and with a continued trend of reducing visitor numbers, the park was forced to close. Some of the rides were sold to other parks, but the rest were left standing and in some cases were still visible from the nearby motorway. It's now one of the creepiest abandoned parks you'll ever see mainly thanks to the fantasy style theme it had yeah that looks that looks creepy that looks cool though oh my gosh man all these theme parks are going broke if there's one thing you shouldn't do it's open up a theme park and how this now oh, looks after the buildings have begun to decay and plants have begun to grow all over the structures walking through you'd almost believe you had been transported to a long forgotten time in history and you can never quite be sure what you'll find around each corner did they demo it no no, all these places are getting demolished. It's not fair. It's not okay. What's the last one? Number one, Wonderland, China. Oh, it's no yeah. surprise that after seeing how successful an amusement park can be, various companies decide to try to cash in by building one of their own. Of course, it's not quite as easy as it may seem, and the investors behind Wonderland in Beijing, China, definitely bit off more than they could chew. The idea was that it would become oh. the largest amusement park in Asia across a more than 120 acre site. That is and they do this by directly copying what had been proven to work elsewhere. Problems began in the construction oh, phase no. though, and in 1998 work was halted because of financial irregularities. Attempts to start construction again in 2008 failed too, in the wake of further financial difficulties. Oh. All dreams of finishing the project were dashed. It remained, however, with the shell of a castle and a number of other incomplete structures that became an attraction in their own right for people wanting to imagine what could have been. Oh. Local farmers who had been forced to sell their land for the park began to take it back and grow oh. their crops there. No and way. Soon very little remained. It was bizarre to see a magical world in the middle of nowhere with no actual magic, and eventually Damn. authorities wanted to be rid of the failed project. Dude, they actually, they built a lot of it and then they just demoed it. Oh, it looks cool, but it was definitely a copy of Disney, Disneyland. Like, you can't, you can't do that. It's not gonna, what are these people thinking? The remaining structures were demolished in 2013, and now a shopping no. mall stands in place of where the castle once was. Oh, so this is gone? Watch your... Oh, well, that's sad. Why? 
Why spend all that money trying to build it and then having to pay to demolish it? That's very sad. But anyway, um, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you did. Um, I post twice a week, posting spooky sort of content. Um, so yeah, if you, if you enjoyed this, come back next time. Don't want to miss out. <laughs> Turn on the post notifications bell so you don't miss an upload. But uh, yeah, comment down below if you've been to an abandoned theme park. Have I been to an abandoned theme park? No. There's none nearby to me. I want to climb an abandoned roller coaster one day, except I'd be way too scared to because I'm scared of heights. So, yeah. Anyways, thanks for watching again. See you guys in the next one, and bye-bye. Um,